You've heard of mosquitoes and malaria, ticks and Lyme disease, but I bet you've never heard of the kissing bug and Chagas disease. And this is something you need to know about. Chagas disease, once you're kissed by the kissing bug, can lead to congestive heart failure. It can lead to massive bloodstream infections. It can make you absolutely and utterly sick. So we better understand it. And we better understand what's going on with Chagas disease. Did you know that there's over 8 million people that have Chagas disease? Now, the majority of them are in Mexico, Central America, and South America. But Chagas disease has now spread all the way to the United States. In fact, there's over a million cases of it in the United States with my colleagues documenting over 300,000 cases just in the states of Texas, Arizona, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Utah, and even Los Angeles. There's 11 different species of the kissing bug that carry Chagas disease. Let's talk about what it is and what it does to your body. So let's talk Chagas disease. Chagas disease is found within a bug called the kissing bug. The kissing bug is about a half to one inch in size. It's a pretty good size, gross, super creepy looking little bug. It hatches from these little teeny small eggs and goes through five juvenile stages before it becomes an adult. And once it's fully grown, the kissing bug can live for two years. How? By feeding off of blood. That's right. These kissing bugs feed off of the blood of humans, dogs, and wild animals. And you can't even feel them bite you. Which is crazy because they're bigger than mosquitoes and they suck your blood for upwards of 10 times as long as a mosquito does. And you feel a mosquito, you feel that little mosquito land on your hand and you kill it and you sometimes see all the blood. But the kissing bug, you won't even feel it when it bites you. How does it work? Well, at night, the kissing bugs hide in crevices and walls and rooftops. Then they descend slowly at night while you're asleep. I'm not joking. I know that you may think this sounds made up. It's not, this is literally what happens. These little buggers then go all the way down and rest on your face and then they start to feast on your blood. And they particularly like the blood around mucous membranes. So if you think of your lips and your mouth, your nose and your eye, this is prime feasting territory for the kissing bug. But it's not just the fact that they gently land on your face, kiss you without letting you know and suck your blood. They then do the most horrendous thing of all. They defecate. They poop right where they bit you. And within that poop hides Chagas disease. Chagas disease is caused by a parasite called Trypanosomia cruzi. And we're going to talk about the life cycle of Trypanosomia cruzi. But before we do, make sure you don't feel any itching or scratching. Because at night, after the kissing bug has kissed you, sucked your blood, and defecated right at the spot where they bit you and broke your skin, the number one way you get it into your body is you start to feel itchy. Think of how many times in the middle of the night you roll over and may smear kissing bug poop into your mucous membrane. How many times do you reach up and scratch these bugs, this is what they do. You may be completely asleep at night and then feel the need to itch or scratch your face. And when you do, you push the parasite right down into your skin and into the cells of your skin. So let's talk about Chagas disease and how this actually works. What happens with Chagas disease is it has 
two different life cycles. A life cycle that occurs in humans, and then a life cycle that occurs in animals. Let's talk about humans first. First, the bug, the kissing bug, that contains the parasite, Trypanosoma cruzii, or what we are going to call T. cruz going forward, comes down, bites you on the face, gives you the kiss that you cannot feel. You then reach up and scratch after it has defecated into your face, and you rub it into your skin. This poop that is infected with T. cruz then goes inside of your cells. In the cells, T. cruz reproduces. It reproduces very quickly and rapidly to the point where it ruptures your cells. When that parasite ruptures out, it spills out into your bloodstream. From your bloodstream, T. cruz then spreads throughout your entire body. When it does, it can go to every part of your body. Oftentimes, we see long-term complications of this parasite affecting people's hearts. It can enlarge them. It can make the cardiac myocytes not contract as hard. It can lead to swelling and edema. But this is the critical part for when it comes to the signs and symptoms of T. cruzi that we're going to talk about in a minute. After it goes into the blood and spreads everywhere, you may then end up getting another bite from the kissing bug. When you do, and that bug sucks your blood in, it sucks T. cruz all the way back up into the bug. The bug then goes and hides back up in the ceiling and waits for the next night and comes down and repeats the cycle over and over again. That's the human cycle. The animal cycle is slightly different because instead of T. cruz reproducing and rupturing in cells, it does all of that in the gut or in the stomach lining of the animals. And then it is defecated out from the animals, or most oftentimes, the bug does the same thing. It bites the animal again, gets it after it's spread through the blood of the animal. Then it goes back and repeats the cycle over and over again. So is it the kissing bug that you need to be afraid of? Well, yeah, a little bit, because it is the vector. It is what carries the parasite. And it's the parasite that gets infected into your cells and into your blood and leads to the fatigue, the tiredness, the swelling of eyes, the swelling of mucous membranes, the vision changes, the headaches, the poor sleep. So let's talk about the symptoms and the signs of Chagas disease. So in order to understand the signs and symptoms of Chagas disease and what this parasite, T. cruz, this little worm-like structure with like a fin on it that looks just like this. In order to understand what it does to you, we need to understand there's two phases to this illness. There's the acute phase that occurs immediately after you get bitten and massage that poop with the parasite right down into your skin. This happens immediately and can last weeks for months. This is where you get this bloodstream infection when the parasite is proliferating all through your blood. You get bite site swelling. This can cause your eye to swell up. It can cause you to lose vision. Your eye can completely cover all the way down because of swelling and you may not even be able to see out of that eye. The parasite can get into the back of the retina and into the eye. You can end up having not only bite site swelling, but you get pain, you get itching. It can cause that part of your face to droop. Sometimes, it may even mimic stroke-like symptoms with facial drooping. We talked about how you can get vision loss. And the number one complaint that we see in the acute phase is fatigue, weakness, and headaches. So after several weeks to a month, you then transition into what is called the chronic phase of Chagas disease. And in the chronic phase, this is where there are things that are a little more dangerous that need to be addressed. It can cause dilation of your heart chambers. If my heart chamber gets big, and when my cardiac muscles try to contract, I may not be able to squeeze all of the blood out of my heart. This can lead to backup of that fluid, not only in the heart, but then into the lungs, and then into the rest of your body, causing your legs to swell. So it can lead to congestive heart failure. If this parasite, T. cruz, the little worm-like guy, then gets into your esophagus, it can make it so you can't swallow. 
You'll try to get food to come down into your stomach and you may not be able to have the peristalsis or the contraction that is needed in your esophagus to move food from your mouth into your stomach. It can even cause you to have dilation of your colon or your bowels. That's right. The poop that may get smeared into your face may make it so that you can't even poop in the end. All from this little parasite, from the kissing bug. And if you're immunosuppressed, individuals that have cancer, or in fact, people with diabetes are also considered immunosuppressed. In these individuals that get Chagas disease, they may end up having recurrent illnesses where it comes back over and over again, despite them getting treatment and trying to take care of this illness. So let's talk about how we would diagnose and treat Chagas disease. Well, first off, your doctor has to be smart enough to have even heard of Chagas disease. And if they're smart enough to have heard of Chagas disease, they then need to be wise enough to think about it when you are telling them your symptoms. Once the physician's able to put two and two together, then that physician will obtain what's called a blood sample. With that blood sample, they will look at it underneath a very powerful microscope. And underneath the microscope, you will see Trypanosomia cruzi look just like this. Once you see that parasite within the blood, you know exactly what is going on. And the treatment for Chagas disease is typically one of two medications that can be prescribed. Benzonidazole and Nifurtimox. These two medications, when they are prescribed within the acute phase of the treatment, are typically the most beneficial. There's one method of transfer of Chagas disease that we didn't talk about yet. That's probably because it's the most disheartening method of transfer to me, and that's congenitally. Meaning that a mother that has Chagas disease can transfer this into their newborn infant. When this happens, we want to make sure that we provide treatment as soon as we possibly can to help the newborns have the best chance at the best life that they can have. Thank you for learning about Chagas disease with me. If you've liked what we've talked about, make sure you like it online, subscribe, get notified about what our next video is. You don't want to miss what we're going to talk about next. Thank you.